Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Uh, so we're going to get uh, to the uh, Ikoyi um, part of Lagos now to get feedback um, as to exactly what is going on on ground at the 21-story building collapse. We're speaking this morning with the DG Lasema, which is Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, Mr. Femi Oke of Saintolu. Good morning and thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. Great to have you. Kindly um, give us an update on what exactly is uh, going on there this morning. Um, have there been more um, um, rescues? Uh, any other person that has been found alive? Yes, um, such a rescue is ongoing. All the key responders that are important to manage the emergency so that are in legal states are on the ground. Some government officials were on the ground yesterday, the deputy governor of legal states. The Honor Commission of Social Justice Planning, the Pantex, and all top Acadians that are important to managing the emergency while on the ground. So, yes, yes, yes. Now, the most important thing is that we are able to rescue for a life. We are receiving adequate treatment in our facility. Now, we recover six bodies at the, at the same. Such as rescue is still ongoing. We are using heavy duty equipment, light duty equipment, Delta. And all what it takes to rescue people from the world. Okay. Okay. Um, being at uh, the site of that very sad, uh, unfortunate incident that could have been avoided, uh, what do you think could have been responsible for the collapse of that building? Well, the most important thing right now is that we are still conducting and rescue to the government operations. I can assure you that we are going to carry out holistic investigation and when we carry it out, we will give you the office. But right now, we are more concerned with the, the type and rescue. Okay, Mr. Mr. Osayintolu, can you share with us um, with regards timing for when the search and rescue operation started, um, because reports have it that it, it took about an hour or maybe two hours before the rescue proper started, before your equipment no, no, no. got on ground there. No, not really. You see, the most important thing is that um, we need to be strategic. When it then occurs, all the key stakeholders move there. And initially, we are using light duty equipment. Then later, we moved our heavy duty equipment from Kappa, which is at, which is at our base of mission, from that place, from that Kappa to Ikoi. I do agree with you that we have some challenges based on the uh, traffic jam, but after some time, when we use our siren, although a lot of people did not really respond to that siren, siren in time, we appealed to them through radio and communication, and we got there quickly. Believe me, we have used live duty to send Delta to go to this, and all the top exteriors, including Mr. Deputy. Governor of Lagos State were on the ground. So when you are looking at that kind of operation, professionally, I would say it is swift, prompt, effective, and efficient, and highly strategic. Yeah, oh, Quick, Mr. Osai, Osai, Mr. Osai of those of, of Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not necessarily saying Lasema um, failed here. Um, what I'm trying to clarify 
Because if we're talking about, you know, the number of people that have been rescued and those who have been found dead, I'm sure that you know the importance of timing. Um, and so there's a lot of conversations that need to be had concerning this particular situation. And that is, you know, some approvals with regards to safety. Um, yesterday, I was on ground there. And I know that I was in that traffic for an hour plus, maybe up to two hours. And there was no actual rescue operation going on at the time that I was there. So it's not necessarily Lasema's fault, but I think it's an important conversation that needs to be had. And that's what I'm trying to clarify with timing, when it started. And if you look at the clips that we are showing on screen currently, all those were at night. The trucks being off offloaded or the, the heavy duty vehicles being offloaded, all those were at night. This happened sometime... Not, 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 um, well, not really. The most important thing is that after the incident occurred, we moved our first excavator in, then as the operation continued, we keep on improving on the type of equipment we are going to use. And by 6 o'clock, we have about 6 excavators with different functions that work on the ground. We use one that we call hammer. We use one that we call cutter and spreader. And we use one that has buckets. And we call all the stakeholders like Bagger, the respondent. And we were there. So, but I quite agree with you that um, they have solved the 15 challenges, which is due to the where we are moving our heavy to that point, we move our heavy duty, which is our base, at Kappa, which is located at Mushi. We move it from Kappa to, uh, to Ikoli Tigera. So along the line, we encounter traffic jam, and we use all effort to, uh, to, to ease the traffic. Okay. So, on that note, I will appeal to good people of Vegas State that when there is any form of emergency, they should please give us good. They should allow us to have easy passage. And if you, if you are there, along that road, too, along that general road, we have it through the combined effort of the police and the military before we have time. Because there are some people that were just there, they passed their vehicles and they started taking pictures. This have hampered our operation. But believe me, 30 minutes after, we are able to be on top of it. And uh, the operation was well coordinated. We moved from one area to another area. We go to the grand floor, and some people are rescued from the grand floor. Okay, uh, let's talk about um, the response time now as well. What during an emergency? What is the exact response time for you? You see, when you are talking about response time, we have all what it takes to respond within ten to thirty minutes. Yesterday, our response time is about 10 minutes. We moved in, into the scene. But the, our equipment that has been deployed, our heavy duty equipment that was deployed, it took about one hour for getting there. But within 10 minutes, all the top petroleum that are important in managing emergency were on the ground. Mr. Deputy Governor of Vegas State was on the ground. We have light duty equipment that we are working with. And it took the, the, the happening and the most good effort of the military and the police to control the place of. In fact, the Commissioner of Police was on the ground to ensure 
that ground control is well maintained. So you will discover that your emergency responders are ready to perform, but our people keep on giving us challenges. Number one, by not giving us easy access to the place, by crowding the scene of emergency, by blocking the road for easy passage of our equipment. Well, so so, so are, you, are you saying that your that response time is 30 minutes in any case of emergency? In 30 minutes that, uh, you know, uh, you will be there, your men will be there, and all of the what necessary I'm equipment. What I'm saying is that in the context, our response time is usually 10 minutes. Because we have people in that locality, operational unit, that will respond to any form of emergency as quickly as possible. And within 10 minutes, in the, any part of the country, we will define the kind of emergency that we are handling. And in any form all over the world, the most important thing is for you to define the emergency that you are reporting to. Then that is when you will be able to know the resources that you are going to use in terms of equipment, in terms of manpower. Yesterday, our response time was 10 minutes. All the key stakeholders that are important to the emergency were on the ground. We started to the emergency equipment. Then it took us a long time before we could move our heavy city equipment to the city. Right. And this is due to the traffic jam. And we are appealing to the good people of the country. That whenever we are moving up, you have less than one minute for. All right, um, Mr. Osanto, I hope we can reconnect with you. Um, um, and I think I understand the point he's trying to make, um, and that's why I had to uh, mention earlier that it's not necessarily a blame La Sema um, for delay in rescue. If, if we're working all night to rescue 21 people, 15 people, nobody knows how many, what the figure is, um, timing is very important. Every single second that a person is buried underground or under rubble, Every single second is vital. And so if they don't make it there in time, and like, yes, he mentioned that their, their response time is 10 minutes. They got there, you know, in 10 minutes, um, you know, but they had to move equipment and it took a while. It's not necessarily their fault that Lagos is choked and there's, you know, it's going to be difficult to move that many vehicles or, that, um, you know, those high-duty vehicles, heavy-duty vehicles to Ikoi. With the traffic that I saw yesterday, almost impossible, except you're going to be airlifting them and dropping them there. Um, so it's not necessarily his fault, but it's a question that Lagos State itself needs to start to answer with regards the safety of buildings anywhere in Lagos. How easy will it be to rescue victims in every single you know, location in Lagos? The same thing, all the build buildings in Ikoi should start to question themselves. And I'm, also, like I'm also thinking, yes, as much as we would say uh, we can't, the blame should not be you know, on the agency, on him. Uh, but I, I'm sure that every city is peculiar. We, we also know that Lagos has, you know, these are the issues with us, this traffic yeah. is jam-packed. One would be thinking that we should be thinking out of the box yeah, in absolutely. case of an emergency. So if we have, if there's going to be traffic, how do we now get, you know, to the site of all of this? How do we get to the spot where this is happening uh, with all of the traffic? So we need to devise other means. We need to come up with other strategies on how emergency. to solve the problem. Because, uh, I mean, it's really sad to think that a lot of people are still trapped as we speak under the, uh, you yeah. know, the, the rock. It's really, really hard. We, we, I don't think we have emergency lanes um, for things like this. I don't. We, we also don't have that. There's no space. So even if you, you told Legoshans, okay, please, this is an emergency. You need to move away so that the the um, um, ambulance, you know, vehicles will pass so that these excavators will pass. There's no nowhere to move to. I looked at the bridge, the whole of Ikoi Bridge yesterday. It was blocked completely. Um, there has to be some way somehow that, you know, they need to do better planning. When I say it wasn't necessarily, I'm not saying that Lassima is ruled out, you know, for, for the blame. Yes, I'm saying that not just them. The question needs to be asked in all ramifications. Everybody needs to start questioning what needs to be done to improve on 
um, safety and, and um, security in Lagos. And it's not just with, you know, with robbery cases, but for also situations like this. Um, we'll take a short break. When we come back, uh, we're moving into talking about the state of the nation with the founder of the One Love Family, Satguru Maharaji. We'll be back.